Hey there, it's Boots Owen here. This is a Candy GCC 590NV. It's a condenser tumble dryer. Missing its fascia. The top, you might be able to see, has all kind of bubbled over because it's been left out in the rain for a while. It's dirty, it's grubby, it's got a couple of dints on it. There's one of them. Uh, grubby, like I say. I could clean that off. I found it and it had a fault where the thermal mini melt fuse had tripped, so it wasn't working. I repaired that. But then I thought, well, what am I keeping this thing for? So I've made a video of how to repair it, and I'll put a link to that. But what I'm going to do now is a bit of an experiment. I don't want to sell this machine. I don't like tumble dryers uh, secondhand. I think you're kind of inviting trouble. So what I'm going to do is take the thermal trips out of it, get it to run, and just see if it will cook. <laughs> see what happens, basically. See if it will go on fire. Who knows? So this whole unit is the, is the element, or the element unit, and inside are some wires that get hot. They ha get electricity through this uh, black and blue cable. So I wonder if this will work. I've got some nails. Pretty sure it will, you know. Okay, which way did that go? This way. I'm just pushing the nail in, and that'll bridge the gap, and hopefully this should work. Does it need a bit of tape on it? Not really. If I want it to go on fire, do I care? Not really. Let's put the cover back on then. Okay, so I've plugged it in. There's nothing in it. Let's just check if it works. Put it up to the maximum time, which is 150. Press play. It's very strange. The motor wasn't running there, but now it is. And I can smell the heat inside. Without the motor running, it'll just overheat and melt the back, which is not very interesting because it's just the element on some metal. I want to see it go on fire inside, so I'm going to get some laundry to put in it. Yep, it's getting hot, so it's all working. So what have I got? A pair of kids' jeans, jumper, some more jeans, something fleecy, which I think might catch fire, and an old jacket. Those are all things that... They were all destined to go to the recycling because they were all had holes in them and whatnot. So there's no real loss on this except for the machine. Let's go again. Okay, there it's rumbling. So it'll take a few minutes to heat up, I presume, and then I'll come back to it. I have spared some time, the laundry's already dry. I didn't check in top actually, it might have a sensor on the top to check if, this, if the moisture, if there's moisture coming back, because it does say sensor condenser, so it might not be possible for it to overheat, I don't know, might have to bypass another sensor. It is warming up, but we're outside on a cold day, so it's hit and miss I guess. This is a infrared digital thermometer. It's not great on shiny surfaces. You can see a little red spot there, 57 degrees. That's actually a lot hotter, it's more like 38 if I can get it to come on. It won't do the shiny surfaces, but it'll do the white. So this, um, this part of the machine now is getting up near 60. It's too hot for me to touch. And that's where the air goes in to the back of the drum. So these numbers aren't right, like it's hotter than this because it's in the sun. So I don't know what I'll do there. 18, that's more like it. So that's pleasantly warm on a day like today. There's hot air blowing out of this vent here. Let's look at inside the machine there, 25 was it? The drum going around. 36. Oh, 37. It's not roasting. On the side there in the shade, 25. The 
plastic on the front of the condenser is 40. The rest of it seems cool enough. It's been on about 10 minutes. Put it on a timed cycle, so I wonder if the sensor works. Because with these ones, I think they sensor drive them to a certain degree. But I don't know if this has a sensor that will cut it off, given that I've taken the thermostat out of it. Not sure. Sixty-one, so that is getting hotter. That's hotter than it was. Keep checking in. can't leave my hand there. What's it doing? That's 60 something before, 62 now. 64. It's getting hotter. Like 60's not going to set any laundry on fire. Oh, do you know what I forgot? I forgot the lint. I've also got this uh, pack of lint that I've saved up that I'm going to throw in and that should help too. I don't know if that will start a fire, but if it gets caught in the element, it might burn up and throw flames through. Maybe. It's optimistic, but we'll see. And just to make it even better, let's take out the filter, because uh, we don't want that. There's a bit of lint in it already. Okay, filter's gone. So this might gum up straight away. Let's try and disperse that around a little bit. Okay, maybe that'll do better. Okay, so with the lint now in it, it's climbing pretty quick actually, because I checked just a second ago to get the, before I got the camera and uh, it was at 88, so rocking and it smells a bit burny now. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get a reading. It's reading 12. It's too shiny. What I could probably do is put a bit of tape or something on there. That might do it. A bit of black tape on there. 20, 34, 28. It smells like it's burning now. It's, uh, it's good I guess. One. That is climbing up pretty fast. Okay, let's just have a peep inside again. So we're going to end up not being able to see much more of this. I think. Oh, right, it's full of lint. <laughs> Yikes! I'm not going to open that again. The lint seems to make a difference. It's 110 degrees on the back now. I won't be touching that. It's pretty hot. So it's just tripped the electricity, I'm not sure why. We might need to run it on a heavier plug. Let's get that back on. So it tripped the residual current device in the house. I'll try turning it back on again, but I'm not sure why that would have happened. 92, it's cooling down pretty quick there, you see. 95. The element's getting hot there as well. Mm -hmm. That is hot. See, it might have... The machine is earthed. If I cut the earth, it won't be earthed. That's probably an idea. Let's take a look in the top of it. So I've taken the screws out of the back here. This should pull off if it's not welded shut. There we go.
one side off. It's sticky. Now it's not live at the moment, what can we see? Nothing really, it all looks okay. It's bloody hot. Circuitry there, it's a bit dusty, but nothing major. Nothing looks blown or popped from this distance. More lint, throw that back in. Let's see if it'll start again. Put the power back on. So attempting to turn it back on has tripped the switch again. Okay, so it has developed a fault. Turning it back on again didn't do anything for it. It's hot. Let's have a look at the laundry. And the fluff. It's hot, but it's not burnt. The fluff is just solid in there. As you might expect. Fuck it, that's hot. <laughs> it's too hot, the plastic, to touch. Okay, maybe let's have a look at the element. I'm not sure where the earth leakage is. If it is an earth leakage fault, it's not an overload. Let's get the screwdriver and take the back off it again. Okay, so that's that's kind of weird. None of the none of the lint has come through because it was all so clumped up inside. But this could be our issue here. We are isolated from the supply now. I'd say that's the issue. So what's happened there is the plastic insulation on this cable has melted from the heat and stopped the machine working. So everything else looks okay, all things being equal. What I could do is pull the cables out to the side so that they're not going to get hot. Like this, put a cable tie in them, keep them down there. Let's do that. Yeah, earth leakage. So what's happened there is that the electricity has found a path to earth. Because the machine is earthed, so there's a green and yellow wire going to all the metal on the machine. So if you touch it, you don't get electrocuted. It goes back to earth. But there's a safety feature in the house, which is an earth leakage circuit breaker, which if the live or neutral comes in contact with any metal part of the machine, it automatically trips the switch. That's what's happened here. It's good, it's a safety feature, and this isn't likely to happen this way anyway because in a real machine these wouldn't be, these would be up on top fixed on, so let's put it back together. It's all cooled down a little bit now, wasting electricity, and start it up again. Okay, so I've just turned it back on at the power at the mains and it's working fine. I'm feeling this lint is a bit of a foolish idea, there's a bit too much in it, but uh, getting it out now is the issue. I'll take out what I can see, and it'll keep catching itself and whatever. In my mind I want a little bit of air to be going over the element, but not too little to block it, if that makes sense. Oh dear. The whole of the condenser is blocked up as well. That's, uh, that's what you get. Okay, well, taking out the lint, let's fire it up again. There it is, it's off again. I'm just keep in, checking in on it. I've aborted it for now. The temperature on the back is around 50, but this side here is blocked and this side isn't. When I open this, there's still a little pathway for air, so I'm gonna try and restrict it some more. a little bit more lint. What I think though is blocking it's no good. I actually really wanted to get some lint through but it doesn't seem to be doing that so maybe I should just leave it with that little bit extra now. We'll see. Let's start again. Okay. So it was at about 55 when I checked. We'll get it back up and see. 
Okay, the temperature's coming up again. It's in the mid 60s round the back where it was hottest before. I want to open this and just see if it's still blocked or what's going on. No, it's still a little bit of an air passage. So what I'll do is I'll put in some more lint and just see. What I'm trying to do is bring it down to almost zero and just see if that makes any difference. It's still going. Put a little bit more fluff in it than it did off screen. It's not overheating anymore, which is frustrating. It's getting too much air cooling down that element, you know? Need to choke it up a bit more. Is all it's all quite hot in here so looking in there there's still a little passageway so I'm just gonna break up a bit more fluff into the machine and uh, put a little bit down here and hopefully that'll clog it a little bit but not too much I'm getting fed up with this I've been here over an hour <laughs> it's quite bizarre that you know these things make the news but I wonder how rare is it really that a machine can actually can actually go on fire like I've taken the two switches, the thermostat and the safety overheating switch out. I've managed to trip the switch in my house, which means that my house is safe. Which, you know, I'm wondering now, like, are people doing this in houses that don't have modern consumer units? I don't know if that can be so. It can be so. So I don't, I'm not sure what the actual fault is that's setting these things on fire, or why people think they're dangerous. I really don't know. You know, tell me in the comments because uh, I'd like to replicate it. And we'll come back when it's when something's happening. There's very little to see on this machine. I can't even like show you it going around. It just makes this clicking noise. All right. Okay, I think we're getting somewhere. So see the screen here. Yeah, it was at 57 30 seconds ago. the decimal there because of the way the sunlight is. 63, 64.5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 65, 67, 65, 66, there we go. So it's moving up quite quickly. sharp our eye on it. 68. I reckon nothing really happens until we get over 100. 74. 75. It's climbing. It's getting hot now. 75.8. 9. 76. I don't know why, but that screw seems to be the hottest bit in and around that screw. Back to the element, 30. The silver doesn't tell me anything. It's cooled off again, it's kind of sitting quite comfortably at 51 degrees. This is quite bizarre, 52. It's not climbing anymore though, it was higher than that. It's at 50, the element's still on. It's almost completely blocked. Well, there's only one thing for it. There's only one thing for it. A little bit more. Okay, so it's shooting up again. It was at 68 just before I turned on the camera. Keep an eye on it again. I keep saying to keep an eye on it. There's nothing else to do. 73. It is quite shooting up now. 87. 88. It's climbing up very slowly. I was just about to record the temperature up at 90 and it started plummeting. And look at it now. It's going down 70, 69, 
68. Oh, this is never gonna happen. I wonder if the element burnt out or has it opened up again? Let's have a look. There is a tiny hole in there for lint to go through. So I'll just plug that up, turn it back on again. It may have burned out the element, that is a possibility. Fifty-nine, it's dropped right back. It's still dropping. I think the element could be dead. Is it climbing again? Oh, it's climbing again. This is quite bizarre. Well, let's see if it climbs up then. Sixty-one and a half. Sixty-two. Okay. Eighty-seven. Eighty-eight. It's climbing up again there. Slowly now. So it means the element isn't dead, which is a good thing. Eighty-eight and a half. The element was dead, you know, the thing is over, the experiment is over. But if we can get it up, my hand's shaky, that's why it's dropping again. 89, 90. I'm just focusing it on the center of that screw there, at the top of the image. 91 and a half. Who knows if this is ever going to do anything? It was at 110 before. It's climbing again, it dropped to 50 or thereabouts from 90. I've stuffed it up with lint all the way across the front because uh, I won't be here all day. I've already been here all day. I've been out here for about two hours. It's climbing quite quickly now. All the while it's tumbling dry laundry, which is quite bizarre. And, you know, watching this experiment, watching me doing this, I don't see how these things can go on fire. I think you'd have to have a lot of bad luck, coupled with a lot of lack of maintenance on the machine. I'm not sure if you have to have a lot of lint build up somehow on the element. the red spot there on the little screw which seems to me to be the hottest bit. We're getting back up for 90 now. Oh, yeah, I don't see how how this can have any issue in a modern house, a modern electrical system. Hundred is hot if I put my hand on it. Ninety-four is hot if I put my hand on it. But an oven glove will take the temperature up to say 200, 300 degrees. You know, Celsius. That is, this is all Celsius. So that laundry is not going to burn unless it gets really hot. Now we're getting for hundred again, which is kind of cool. So I wonder if what happened last time there, we just crossed a hundred. I wonder if what happened last time was something to do with the cool down cycle. Maybe I'd gone through the cool down again now. Oh, it's still, got, still rising. But it'll come to the end of the cycle and starting to just blow the fan and cool down. That might have happened. So it's cooling off again, it's very hard. There's wavy heat lines coming off it, which is kind of weird. That's cooling down again. I really don't know. And 100 appears hot. Yeah, it's a bit hotter kind of in the round. 100 appears hot, but if the fuse is meant to go at 200 and something, well then, 100's only halfway there. Granted, the fuse is in there where the heat is blowing top of the element and that's actually getting hot now. It wasn't so hot before. Which is good. I'd like to see it pop. Five out of it now, that's better. I 
I just don't get it. It's gone down from 105 to 89. 88. You know, what's really going on? Let's have a look in the machine. This stuff's all pretty hot. Like it's completely blocked. Just completely blocked. What is really going on? I think I'm gonna abort this mission. I don't really see that there's anything else, you know, I'm not gonna, it doesn't look like I'm gonna get, I'm pretty sure we're not gonna get flames licking out of it anytime soon. Especially if the temperature just keeps rising up and down about 100, unless there's some other thermocouple inside that I don't know about. I don't know. If you do, let me know in the comments. Just to finish it up, I've brought it back inside and I've taken the back panel off it again. So I want to see how it looks in there. So you can see that no lint has made it up into the element. So I'm not really sure how you would get one of these to go on fire. I guess you'd have to somehow have the lint distributed blowing in to the element. I don't know. It's all a bit weird really. <laughs> I just don't know. Like this setup's obviously not safe, but they're they don't well they're not hot anymore. But they didn't apart from the one that melted when it got stuck here. There wasn't really any issue. I don't know. I think if you run one of these with a filter I have no idea how you could ever get them blocked like that. Right. Let me know in the comments, because I don't know everything. Thanks for watching. See you later.